You know, Carrie, sometimes we find it fun to make recipes that sound pretty darn awful. Yeah, like ones with Miracle Whip. Ooh, no kidding. But in this episode, we're making something that, if we don't mess it up, will be absolutely delicious. That is a tall order for us, Kristen. That is so true. Welcome to Mom's Wooden Spoon. Get your apron on and your fanny flicker ready as we cook up some nostalgia. Ooh, yummy. We are so excited to be making a very, very special recipe this week, Carrie. Yes. It is the winner of our family favorite recipe contest. I'm very excited about this. So am I. And this recipe was submitted by a high school friend of mine, Carl. I know Carl as well. He was older than I was in high school. Yes. Yeah. I think I went to high school with his uh, younger brother, actually. I think you did. Yes. Yes. I was in choir with Carl. As was I. Oh, my gosh. We're just two singing families. Well, yeah, for sure. Oh, my gosh. We could all get together and have a quartet. We totally could. We could just do a quartet singing episode. Oh, my gosh. Carl, would you be down for that? <laughs> That's just weird. Let's move on and talk about the recipe he submitted. Carl's going to be like, what have I done? Oh my gosh. I I have unleashed these two wackadoodle women on my family. My family's never going to forgive me. Why did I do this? Sorry, Carl. (laughs) Sorry. So he submitted his mom, Diana's famous baklava recipe. Oh. I know. I have never made baklava before, but I adore baklava. I have also never made it, and I quite frankly am a little nervous about the phyllo dough. I am really nervous. When you sent me the recipe and I'm looking at the different steps, I'm thinking, I don't I don't know if my culinary skills are up to this. Yeah, well, you know, I am obviously super excited to do this. I'm so excited that people wrote and provided us some recipes. Absolutely. But now that we're here Mm -hmm. and we are approaching creating this recipe, I'm a little nervous that we're going to screw it up. It's one thing to screw up Mary's that were written for the masses and the home cooks and there's you know, things don't always translate over. It's another yeah. thing to just be dumb when you're doing <laughs> some right? like loved recipe. What if we right. screw it up? We could mess up a beloved recipe, Carrie. Yes. Yes. Oh my and, gosh. And then we're not known for nostalgia. We're known for being horrifyingly awful. <laughs> loser <laughs> make loser pants. You know, and I really consider myself a pretty darn good cook. We always laugh about the fact that when my husband eats my food and he's at work and and you work with my husband, he will always say, oh my gosh, this is the best such and such ever. Everything you make is the best. Here, this is a world famous made by Gordon Ramsay enchilada. Oh, it's good. But Kristen, she makes the best. And it doesn't matter. Insert food here. Everything you make is always the best. I totally harass him because nobody makes everything the best. It is so not true. I have so many flops. But did I marry the best man ever? Uh, I think so. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. And you are the baker in the family. So I'm really going to let you take over today. You know, if we have questions about stuff because you are used to working with baked goods, pastry, things like that. And she has this look on her face like, don't trust me. But Did I mention that I have fears that I'm going to be a part of screwing up someone's beloved family recipe? But I want that if this becomes an epic fail, we know it will not be because of Mrs. Easley's recipe. I want to have somebody to blame and I don't want it to be me. <laughs> so Carrie, you're in charge of making sure this turns out well. Perfect. If the dough is soggy, it's my fault. It's Carrie's fault. Well, I don't think it's going to be soggy because our first step is going to be to take three sticks of butter. It says three quarters of a pound, and we're going to clarify the butter. So what do we talk about? It's intention. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. You know, I have never clarified butter. I've cooked with clarified butter. I've cooked with ghee before, but I've never done it myself. And so Mrs. Easley has the, the directions right down here. So I'm just going to try to follow them the best I can because I'm in charge of the la clarification. Okay. And so clarifying butter is basically like... So you, you remove the solids. 
Interesting. This is one of the parts of this recipe that makes me nervous that I'm going to mess it up because I don't want to burn this butter or have browned butter. That's right. not what you're supposed to do. Right. Different. I know what browned butter is. And that is also delicious. You can use brown yeah. butter to make delicious recipes, but this is not browning the butter. So. No. So the purpose of clarifying butter is to raise its smoking point. Oh, okay. That does make sense. So you can cook in it better yeah. without it burning. Yes. And so when we put this delicious, beautiful clarified butter on the baklava, it's going to cook. It's not going to smoke. And we're going to have beautiful essence of butter. I noticed when I open a jar of ghee to cook it with... It smells like butter. So buttery. Kind of like the butter flavor oil that we used in the pistachio cake, but real. But real. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah, that sounds perfect. Okay, cool. so you are headed off to the stove to begin the clarifying process. We're going to remove the butter solids out, and there's a foam on the top. I will say butter foam sounds pretty nasty. Butter foam. Um, I know that fancy cooks add a foam. Yeah. Um, that, I don't know. Somehow food foam is just gross to me. You know, it does not sound like a food foam would have a yummy mouth appeal to it. You touch it to your tongue and it kind of disappears. Yeah. More like an essence. Yeah. Of, Yuck, yucky. Yeah. You're really onto the essence today. I didn't say the word essence enough. Twice. <laughs> mother-in-law used to say twice with the T at the end. I wonder if it's like a Southern Ohio thing. She grew up in Southern Ohio. And when we would say, oh, you just said twice, she'd say, no, I didn't. And then, <laughs> Have I told the wash wash story? <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't, know, I don't know if this is a Southern Ohio thing too. You guys are going to hear it again. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when I was in the second grade, my teacher said, wash, go wash your hands. Yeah. And I always thought that was so silly. And one of the students in class said, you know, teacher name, who I can't remember, this teacher, can I go wash my hands? And she said, it's not wash, it's wash. Now go wash your hands. And little second grade me was like, she doesn't even know she's doing it. Yeah. People don't. You know what I notice? I sometimes hear dad say milk. Oh, now that is absolutely a regional thing. Yeah. Milk. Yes. Milk. I yeah. don't think I do, but... I don't think that you do either. Okay. Good answer. I, I think we have not lived in Ohio for a very long time. Well, that's true, because we don't do pop anymore. Which is sad to me. Mm -hmm. I really miss calling it pop. I call it soda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we're boring. You know what? We may have been boring beforehand. We just had cool colloquialisms, Carrie. Now we're, we're a new kind of boring. <laughs> we are, but you know what? We know how to play euchre. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> and if you in our listening audience do not know how to play euchre, call us. We'll tell you. Yes, how. absolutely. Best game ever. You're going to think that we've lost our ever-loving minds when we start talking about it and telling you the jack this and the jack that. And you're like, this game is jacked. Yeah, It's not. It's awesome. It's, it is the most awesome game. And when we find someone here in Georgia that knows how to play it, they're our new best friends. Yeah, I, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess what we're saying is, is if you meet us in Georgia and you know how to play euchre, be very careful sharing that information because it'll <laughs> leech right on to you. We're going to suck you right in, man. <laughs> <laughs> we seem like fun, but we're not. <laughs> we're leeches. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. Well, you know, this recipe is super exciting because Mrs. Easley's recipe is really a labor of love. Okay. She immigrated here in 1969. She grew up in the Middle East. Oh, wow. Right. And so she would eat baklava that they bought at the markets, that friends would bring over. Like real right. baklava. Real like baklava. No, no joke. We know baklava. Yes. Baklava. Yes. Okay. And so when she immigrated here and then had her own family, uh, she began to look for recipes to try to make it herself. Oh, that's awesome. So this is her recreating her childhood in a recipe. I love that. I mean, my gosh, that's us here at Mom's Wooden Spoon. We really are. That's what we're all about. We're about family favorites. We're about homemakers in the 1970s. Yeah, and recreating those happy memories of childhood and food. That's what it is. And that's and, just what she wanted to do. Yeah, and yay for her that it's not jello with grated carrots and raisins the size of chihuahua. Wait a minute. Yay for us. <laughs> <laughs> so she found a recipe in a cookbook, but it just wasn't quite exactly what she's looking for. So apparently she tweaked it a couple of times and her first two times were epic fails. <laughs> and the third time, 
literally was the charm. And that's the recipe that we have today that we will be putting out on social media and on our webpage for you all. That's awesome. Isn't that great? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. That's wonderful. So we really just get to taste a little bit of her childhood, how she remembers it. I think that's awesome. So if I recall from the story that yeah. we received from Carl, yeah. it became a bit of a competition. <laughs> a um, family competition. A family yes. competition. So if I understand, it turns out that maybe her brother remembers his childhood baklava a little different than she did. Oh, and yeah. they both were recreating their childhoods yes. and um, arguing over who did it better. That's right. It was this continuous fight throughout the years of whose is better, Diana's or David's? I love it. And of course, Diana knows that hers is better. Well, it goes without saying. Well, we're not making David's. I mean, let's just... <laughs> Obviously. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Carrie, the butter's looking great. The three sticks are about uh, three quarters of the way melted. So I'm just doing it on low. I don't want to burn the bad boy. Okay, this is going to be a six hour podcast <laughs> as we clarify butter. Well, so. that's okay because since we are honoring the year that Mrs. Easley immigrated to the United States, 1969, we love to hear immigration stories. Yes. I find them. Just fascinating. I mean, something huge has to occur to make someone move from one location to, I mean, that's scary. I mean, I've yeah. moved from the northern U.S. to the southern U.S., and that was hard. Yeah. But I can't even begin to imagine from one end of the world to the other. No kidding. What that's like. Well, so, and, and Carl's mom grew up in the Middle East. So they lived in Lebanon, Baghdad, Tehran. That's incredible. And yes. they moved here. So well, And they had to just keep moving because of all the constant conflicts in those areas. Wow. Yeah. That's really fascinating. Our grandma moved here when she was 13 yes. from Scotland. And obviously, I'm not going to regale you all with the story of that and how it went. Right. But I think I, I don't know, I'm just always very interested in what, what brings that. They were looking for a better life. And it turns out, actually, it wasn't better it, necessarily. It really wasn't better. Yeah. They're not always happy stories, but they are incredible stories. Yes. And human resilience and, and just, I don't know, the kind of stuff that you can find inspiring. It is such bravery. Oh, huge. I just, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Oh my gosh. That's usually what I do. Dang it, Carrie. Stop. Ah, uh, this is a great moment for me. <laughs> Kristen's the crybaby today. I try to emotionally block myself off from everything, but <laughs> I well, started thinking mostly about she meant me. Um, <laughs> How she copes with dealing with me. I do. I'm like, emotional wall down. Oh, here comes Carrie. Feel nothing. <laughs> it's because Carrie feels enough for the both of us. <laughs> it's my willy nilly way. Oh, just drives you nuts. We've talked about that before. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, I think that's great. Okay, yeah. so we are going to get to see for sure. Yeah. If uh, David's recipe is uh, going down. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's going to. Okay, so we have a little movement here on the edge of the pan. We have a, like, a, looks like a little simmery. Let me go back and reread these directions. Okay. I'm clarifying it. Melt it slowly over low heat. Uh-huh. Okay. So I, I think I have it on a little too high then. I just am paranoid. I'm not, I'm A, paranoid, and then I'm also not very good at being patient. Oh, it's, it's you know? hard in cooking. You want to just crank the heat up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I looked into baklava. I've eaten it, and that's really the extent of my knowledge. Yeah. And so I found a couple things that are very interesting. So first off, if you want to mark your calendars, November 17th. Oh, so in a few months, yeah. November 17th, you're going to want to hit up Mom's Wooden Spoon website, yeah. pull up Mrs. Easley's recipe. That's right. And celebrate National Baklava Day. Only eight months away. So maybe right now, guys, you're listening to the podcast. I don't care if you're driving your car, pull over, get your phone out, get your calendar and mark her down. What day in November, Carrie? The 17th. Okay. And yeah. then go yeah. home and start clarifying the butter. <laughs> because it's taking you forever. So, <laughs> so come November, you're totally going to be ready. <laughs> Perfect. I love okay. it. Okay. So, yeah. and then I learned that various 
areas have various recipes. So some baklavas, I really want to say baklava. Which mm-hmm. might be the correct pronunciation. I don't know. I didn't look that up. Okay. It's okay, wait. Bad. I'm going to click the baklava pronunciation. Oh, let's, let's turn up the volume real loud. You ready? Baklava. 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 Okay. But that's how they say it here in America. That might not be the real traditional way to pronounce it, but okay. All right. So baklava, I think I did that right, is different and they use different nuts. Oh, yes. So in some places it's all walnuts, which is what we're doing. That's right. In some places they use pecans, pistachios, some places spice it, some places don't. They all kind of have their own regional baklava. So Mrs. Easley recreating her childhood, she's recreating the region that she grew up eating. That's in. right. That was kind of interesting. And her favorite flavors. That, yes, that she remembers. I just I thought that was neat. That. That so was really then cool. it Ooh. turns out wait, wait, there's much. More. Oh yes, much like Diana and David's battle of the baklava. Yeah. It turns out that Greece and Turkey were vying for ownership oh. of who created baklava. Wow. And it must have gotten so heated that the European Union stepped in and like, well, we're going to make a decision once and for all. Oh my gosh. Because if you've ever spoken to the European Union, that's how they sound. Right. And because we speak to them all the time. I just was, when I was talking to them last week. Right. And they sound like this. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 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 They decided Turkey. Wow. Yeah. So I'm so sorry. Oh, Grace. I don't know that we should be saying this on our podcast. We try to not be controversial. If we have Greek listeners, they're going to be mad at us. But it's not me. I did. I, I didn't make the decision. The European Union <laughs> made the decision. So that's all on them. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. Oh, so, Gary, Gary, wait. What? There's, some, there's some white foam starting on the top. I can Ew. see it. That sounds yucky. I'm going to look. Well, but it's okay because that's the part we're skimming off. And then I'm going to feed it to you by the spoonful as we let our listeners see what you think. <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> so well, why don't I tell you kind of what we're going to do from here? Well, yeah, because we haven't even told everybody what the ingredients are and how we put it together. So, sure. Yeah. Okay. So we purchased some phyllo dough. You can spell it. F-I-L-O. That yeah. is correct. And that would make you European. Or British, I guess British. Or you can spell it the fancy way, P-H-Y-L-L-O, and that would make you American, which I find kind of interesting because I usually expect the fancy spelling to be British. Yes. But not in this case. Okay, so we've got the purchased phyllo dough. We have a whole bunch of walnuts, and they have been pulverized. And then Kristen is making the oil component, which is the clarified butter and vegetable oil. Yeah, we're going to mix it with a little veggie oil. Yes. Oh, and then we're going to use some honey. That's right. And we're going to make a simple syrup. You know, I was surprised because I never knew how they made baklava. I basically thought they just dumped a whole bunch of honey on the top. I didn't know they made this simple syrup and then just put a little bit of honey in it. Yeah. All right. So I am actually done clarifying the butter, here. What? That's exciting. To, I know, right? I'm going to take it from the pot and I'm going to put it in this bowl where I'm going to mix the oil. I can see all of the solids at the bottom and I am just avoiding them. Beautiful, clear butter. Perfect. Nice. So after Kristen has the oil stuff, basically we're going to take two sheets of phyllo dough. Yeah. Um, we're going to put some butter on them. We're going to put a couple tablespoons of the nuts on the top yep. and do that over and over and over. And I think it's like 17 layers. Is that right? I think Absolutely. she said 19. A lot. 19. I think it would be 19 layers. And we have to make sure it's really important that we butter the entire dish First, so we're going to use a pastry brush and we're going to take this butter oil mixture and just butter the heck out of the dish because we don't want it sticking. That's for sure. Oh my gosh, that would be awful. And Kristen's pastry brush, Kristen's pastry brush is red silicone. Yeah. And it looks like a chicken comb, you know? So I keep pushing it up at the top of my head and clucking like a chicken. I'm not going to do that now. That's delightful because so many people are going to want to eat this baklava now that they know that the basting brush is been close to your dirty hair. I've been sticking it up my nose and in my <laughs> ear. And uh, we were going to mail everybody a piece of baklava to our now. listening audience. And now, now. now we're going to be forced to eat it all. So, Oh, oh what a shame. Aww. I can't believe I did that. No. That's awful. <laughs> 
So I want to share that since Greece lost the Battle of the Baklava, yes, there is something that Greece does amazingly well. Okay. And that is a tasty beverage called ouzo. Ooh. Ouzo is a liqueur, yes. very thick, clear, but it tastes like anise, a.k.a. Black licorice. Oh, yeah. Oh, she just she just dropped the basting brush on the floor. She's wiping it on her pants. Oh, my gosh. We're good. She just blew it off. Really? We're good. I have another basting brush that we'll be using. It's fine. It's this all is, fine. So it's got hair gook in it and now floor gook. I have dogs. Ew. It's all good. It's all good. It is not good. Um, okay, so Uzo. Back to the important things in life. Uzo. Oh, Carrie. All right. Uzo is a very strong liqueur. Yes. Um, there's a lot of high alcohol content in that bad boy. So we go to a local Greek fest and my husband goes up. He's like, I'm going to go get a drink. So he's looking at the beverages available and there's this Uzo. He's not real sure what it is. And the person serving him is not real sure what it is. What? They take a wine glass. <laughs> the person was obviously not Greek. Who was working they poured ouzo in a wine glass? A full wine glass of ouzo. Oh, my gosh. Usually, people, in case you're not familiar with ouzo, it's in a little shot glass. Oh, and you just sip it because it's goodness. strong. He didn't even know what he had because he, he'd never heard of it. Right. And so he comes back, and he has enjoyed about half of his glass of what I assumed was white wine. And I said, well, what are you drinking there, honey? He's like, well, I don't know. It's this wowza, wowza, I don't know. And I'm like, ouzo? He's like, yeah, that's what it's called. Ooh. <laughs> oh, did you just drink half a wine glass of ouzo? <laughs> oh, no. Needless to say, we got him some coffee. Oh, no. We stumbled around for a while. I drove us home. Oh, that is so bad. Oh, my God. So, but he really, really liked the Uzo. Well, I bet he did. And he got the deal of a century. He paid for a shot worth and he got a wine, wine glass. glass. And oh. He, oh, yeah. He didn't care for the Uzo so much the following day. Ooh, I bet not. <laughs> I bet not. Oh, oh my boy. goodness. So I have taken control of the basting brush because Carrie cannot be trusted with this. I have now run it under boiling water and soap because I ain't making no delicious baklava with your... I itched my toes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what her problem Ew. is. Uh, All right. Kristen has uh, clarified beautifully. It really does look lovely. Okay, but. so filo dough comes wrapped in plastic wrap. So I have it out on the counter, flat, on top of the plastic wrap that it comes wrapped in. And I have it covered with a, a damp cloth. cloth to keep it moist. And so then it says to fold and flip in half crosswise, lift it up gently and unfold it into the prepared dish, pressing it flat and folding down any excess around the sides. And then we have to sprinkle the pastry evenly with about three tablespoons of the pulverized walnuts. And it says, repeat the same procedure using two sheets of buttered phyllo. So I'm assuming we start with two in the bottom. Right. And then just keep going from there. Yep. All right. So it's coming off All beautifully. Right. Kristen grabbed two. Yes, I did. Oh, wow, she ruined it. No, oh, I ruined it. It's just so light and leafy, you know? It just really blows like a leaf. I actually have to admit that I watched a video online to make sure that I would not totally embarrass myself here today. Did we mention that we've got some anxiety over this one? I think we do. Yeah. Yeah. And they had some interesting tips about it. The lady was like, don't be panicked about it. If you rip it, that's fine. Just keep going. And so she said some of the tricky part is putting the butter because the the leaves want to just kind of... Oh, go with you. Yeah, fly up with the pastry brush. So I'm kind of dab, dab, dabbing. She is. She's she's dabbing. It might take five hours. It, well, you know, that's yep. Kristen with the butter. Okay. I think I've been buttered. All right. Butter my phyllo and call me happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's color me purple and call me happy, oh. Harry. You missed a spot. Oh, shush. <laughs> 1969. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Mrs. Easley moves here to the United States. Yes. And just in time for Sesame Street. Oh, Sesame my Street gosh. debuted in 1969. 
Love some Sesame Street. Yes. Part of the beauty of Sesame Street yes. is that those amazing puppets that you loved interacted with human beings. That is so true. Which apparently they were told to not do. Oh, and by whom? By their the specialists who are helping them create a, oh, a solid okay. kid show. Yeah. That it would be too confusing for children and they wouldn't be interested. Oh, you're kidding. And when they test marketed it, they found that when the puppets weren't on, the kids lost interest. Of and course. And so they're like, well, forget you and your fabulous advice. <laughs> we are just going to do the interaction. Yeah. And boy, oh boy, were they right. Were they right. Yeah. You know, this is absolutely turning out just like Mrs. Easley's recipe says. She said, you're going to have to fold it over a little bit. And so I'm trying to fold it over on the left. There's just about, what would you say, an inch that it has to be folded over, half an inch. Yeah, half and an then inch. I'll do it on the right so it's not too thick on one side or the yeah. other. It just doesn't completely fit in the container. I think maybe if we had done a metal 9 by 13 pan, you know how they're a little more square? Yeah, yeah. That this may have fit better. We're using glass and that may have been the wrong thing, but... But it I don't is know. what it is. It is what it is. Well, you know, Carrie, another show that came out in 1969 that we all know. Okay. Hee Haw. Really? Absolutely. I'll be darned. You know, that was on the TV when we were growing up. It was. Our parents would watch Hee Haw. Okay, so oh. the only person I know from Hee Haw is Minnie Pearl. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's it. Now, wait a minute. That. I got nothing. Wait a minute. Do you know? Where, where are you two not? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and I thought I found true love. You met another and he was gone. I do. You that, knew it. She did that the Pee song? That is. I was going to scream, join in, Carl. <laughs> with our choir singing. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so there is another show that did not come out in 69, but it had a vehicle in it from 1969. And I'll give you a hint. Oh, I, I think I got it. Oh, you do? Yeah. A 1969 Dodge Charger. Yes. Orange? Yes. I think that would be one uh, Dukes of Hazard. Yeah! Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have found this really cool fact about uh, Dukes of Hazard and the Dodge Charger, the General Lee that they used. Yes. Do you know how many Dodge Chargers were destroyed during the filming of just the Dukes of Hazard TV show that ran from 1979 to 1985? Oh, I bet it was huge. Hundreds. Yep. They destroyed 300 of them. That equaled out to be about two Dodge Chargers per episode. That does not surprise me. Isn't that crazy? Can you imagine the number of yeah. the number oh, broken axles just from all the jumps? It really gave us, as children of the 80s, false ideas of what you would do if you saw a ramp on the highway. <laughs> On the side of the road. <laughs> I think kids still have that idea. I mean, have you watched America's Funniest Home Videos? Oh, that's true. That's and the true, bicycles. Yeah. I mean, yeah. kids just love a good ramp. Well, I also thought it was cool when we would watch Knight Rider and that Michael Knight would drive Kit right up the ramp of a moving semi. I mean, that is just crazy. That's crazy talk right yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> well, you know what? It really is going smoothly, isn't it, Carrie? It is. I think doing it as a group effort is it's super nice. First of all, it's fun. It is. And then second of all, the phyllo dough is not ripping apart. It's just really going on beautifully. It is. It's quite frankly a lot easier than I thought. I saw 19 yeah. layers and I was a bit panicked. Yeah, I was too. And then Kristen started clarifying butter over a small five-hour window. And I thought, holy, <laughs> holy cow, we're we're in trouble here. But so far, actually, this is way more doable than I thought it was going to be. I totally agree. Well, you know, we were not, well, I was not born until 1970, but I found this fact online about 1969 and I found it fascinating. In 1969, Carrie, about 90% of all American school children walked to school. Wow. Yeah. We did not. We did not. We lived a little further out. But, you know, I remember my mother-in-law telling me that she would walk home for lunch. That was not in 1969, but, right. you know, so they really built neighborhood schools. Uh -huh. And, you know, we did not really live in the downtown area of our town. And mm -hmm. so we could not have walked. No. Although I did threaten to walk to my grandma's a lot of times when I was mad at mom. I did get mad at mom once and walk. Did you? You yeah. walked to grandma's? No, but I walked from uh, where we lived to the old neighborhood. I mean, it was miles. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, I didn't even tell her I left. Maybe Whoa. not one of my better life choices. I was in high school. Oh, you were in high yeah, school. High school. That's angst. okay. Yeah. High school angst. We all had it. Yeah. So I got thinking about, you know, school and school age kids. And that made me think about what children's books were popular or may have come out in 1969. And there was one that surprised me because I actually thought it was older than this. Okay. And that is a book by Eric Carl. <gasps> Was it The Very Hungry Caterpillar? It was. Now, I don't remember being a huge fan of that as a kid. Were you? No, I kind of thought it was overplayed. But I like to stick my finger in those holes, through the holes of the in book. The, in the yeah, book. That yeah. part was the coolest that part. The fine. story, meh. Well, I was thinking about what was my favorite picture book of the time, you know. Okay. And it has to be Richard Scarry's best story book ever. Oh, those pictures are amazing. Oh my gosh. And they ranged from cutie patootie little animals driving cars. Yes, right. That's what I remember. To these absolutely gorgeous pictures of like a bunny in a hollowed out tree in the winter under a little blankie. So beautiful. I don't remember those. I just oh remember like gosh. the little cities of animals. Oh, and, and then I remember the one where the papa bear takes the baby bear to bed and he puts the baby bear up on his shoulders and then pretends that he's lost baby bear. And he yeah. walks all around the house and he can't find him. And in my mind, that bear was our dad. It just reminded me of our dad. Well, well you know why? Because dad marched us to bed. He would march us to bed and he would put one of us on his shoulders. Oh, that's right. And the other one would have to follow behind. Yeah. And it was the best to be on the shoulders because the person on the shoulders got to go to bed second. Oh, and as right. a child, that extra two minutes was everything. Well, it totally is. And yeah. the best part of it is he'd go, lip, lip. Lip, rot, lip, and yep. we would march right along yeah, with him. And when you were on his shoulders, when he'd go under the doors, oh. you'd have to duck <laughs> way down so you didn't smack your head on the, the door right. frame. That was just like the papa bear in that story. You'd have to bend down low to not crack the little baby bear's head on the I think that, yeah, door frame. Well, that, I always thought the same thing, and I think that's exactly why, is because we would get to sit on the I shoulders. I forgot about the sitting on the shoulders part, Carrie. Yep. That's so funny. Well, I probably got to, well, I guess I didn't do it longer than you. But you were younger than I was, so you were right. smaller. Yeah, so I probably was, I was on the shoulders more often yeah. because yeah. of my size. So you think I'm using enough butter? We have a whole lot left. There is quite a bit, but you know what? We have an entire second roll of dough. Oh, I forgot about that. We are about halfway through the pan. Yes. Which is perfect because we're about halfway through the dough. Yes. Um, we've got a second roll to go. We left it in the wrap just to try and keep it from drying out. That's right. This um, is actually quite fun. I'm enjoying it. This, this ended up being perfect. I was so nervous about this and I thought, oh no, sometimes when we make a little more complicated recipes, it's hard to talk to our listeners as we do it. Cookies. We're the oh, worst. Yes. As you're scooping cookies and you're trying to do it fast. And, oh my gosh. You can't talk and scoop cookies simultaneously. No. So sometimes we'll have to pause it and then just talk and then go back. Or sometimes you guys get the most boring episode ever. Yeah. Just I'm depends. really sorry. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. Sometimes when we're working, struggling to figure out the recipe, our conversations are lame. They are really lame. And we talk really slow. Yep. You know what? A couple people have mentioned that. First, they started with, why does Carrie talk so slowly? Oh, and I'm like, dumb. Gosh, <laughs> she's a dumb dumb. No, it's because you are trying to recall the story as you are trying to read recipes and follow the directions. It's sometimes tricky. It, it really it? is. We don't prep for this. Well, I mean, we, we prep a lot. We do not cook the recipe beforehand. No. Yes, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah. So, I mean, we're butzing along with this recipe, screwing stuff up. Live. Yeah, we are. As we go, and if, if we didn't know what the heck we were doing when we started, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. Okay, I think this is going to end up being absolutely perfect because it looks like we're almost halfway through. So I just have a couple more. Um, I like that you're surprised by this. It's like she planned this recipe to have just the right amount of everything. Weird. <laughs> I am not surprised by that. I'm surprised that I have not screwed it up royally. <laughs> That's what I'm surprised you know what? by. Don't let her fool you. She's surprised that I <laughs> have not screwed it up royally. Oh, okay. Let's be honest. Uh, that's the truth. Okay. So we have finished up our first roll of the filo dough. Yep. 
And so Carrie's gonna sprinkle on her next three tablespoons. And we will be back in a few because this is gonna take the same amount of time for us to use up the rest of the phyllo dough. And I ain't got nothing else to say. I don't know what I am. I was just thinking that maybe we need to kind of divide and conquer at some point so we can get started on that simple syrup. Well, actually, the... Oh, she just well actually me. <laughs> Nothing good ever comes after well actually. That's true. This takes, I believe, over 50 minutes to bake. I think we bake it at 350 for 30 minutes, and then we reduce the heat to 300 degrees and bake it for 45 minutes longer. And they say to make the simple syrup as it's baking. Oh, so we don't put the simple syrup on before. No, we will bake this in the oven. It'll get crispy and beautiful. And then as soon as we pull it out of the oven, you're supposed to start spooning over the simple syrup and the honey. Which is mixed in with the simple syrup. Oh, it's a yes. combo. Yeah. I don't know why Kristen thinks that you guys don't want to listen to us for four and a half hours as we continue on this process. I mean, we are super exciting. Whatever. <laughs> Well, we have done a lot of things. We've been busy little beavers. We have. We have not just been sitting, chit-chatting over in the dining room, forgetting that we had stuff on the stove. Having a wine glass of ooze on. That's right. <laughs> what we've done is we finished putting the layers of the phyllo dough and the nuts on. Yep. And if I may add, a yeah. little pat on the back to Kristen and Carrie. Yeah. Because we had just the right amount of butter and <laughs> dough and nuts. and Actually, Carrie, just a little pat on the back to Mrs. Easley. Her recipe was perfect. <laughs> I, I suppose give credit where it's due. Fine. It was awesome. Yeah. And then we scored it. With a really sharp knife. Yes. And got it in those kind of diamond looking shape. I mean, they're pretty bootleggy diamonds, but if you look at it just right. Yeah. It's yeah, a diamond. Yeah. I'd say that's the worst of what we've done because then we put it in the oven at 350 for 30 minutes. Yep. And then we cranked down the temperature to 300 degrees and put it in for 45 more minutes. And while that was happening, we made the simple syrup. Yep. And then added the honey at the end. We did. I am so proud. Proud. Like, it, it is, is one of the most beautiful. beautiful things I have ever been a part of making. I absolutely cannot believe that we didn't screw this up. <laughs> well, we haven't tried it yet, so there's always time. That's true. Oh, and there's lemon juice in the simple syrup that we made. So I can't wait to see if we can taste that flavor in there. So we've been letting it cool. It says to let it cool to room temperature. I don't know that we can wait that long. No, I know I absolutely can't wait that long. Now, the person I saw online said it's even better the next day day because the simple syrup really has a chance to, to combine and get in there. But Carl had a great recommendation on this. He said, you have to be sure to refrigerate it sure. when it's cooled, but then don't completely cover it with like a cling wrap or a lid because it will get soggy. And part of the beauty is the crispness oh, yeah. of the phyllo dough. It's just gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And so he recommended that you just put a loose paper towel over the top. Okay. So we could do that, but you know, we're not waiting for any of that. This oh, is no. not going in the fridge. This is going in our mouths. Yes. Yes. And if our tongue gets burnt in the process, so be it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I said to Kristen that I'm like, I would make this again Yeah. just for the presentation. It's a sight to behold, y'all. If you've never gone to our website, I yeah. would really encourage this is the one that you check it out because we will show pictures. Yes. I always yeah. make a picture compilation of the different parts in the process of making a recipe. And quite honestly, this is gorgeous. This looks way better than corned beef and jello. That's I'll all I got. That much. Yeah. All right. So who's going first? Well, I think uh, you, Chris. Okay. Is, you've let us off here. So I'm going to let you lead off on the bite. Okay. You guys ready to listen? Let's oh, yeah. See. For crackling. Let's see. Oh, wow. That oh. was awesome. That was beautiful crackling. It is. It is a nice, thick piece. The nuts are just brown and beautiful. Kristen is doing a victory cheer in silence with their eyes closed. Mm. I think it's all right. It's oh, my gosh. Go I don't want to talk with my mouth full, but this is absolute heaven. If I could applaud Mrs. Easley and not have it spike our sound out on this audio... <laughs> 
I would do it in a heartbeat. Oh, Mrs. Easley and Carl, thank you so, so much for this recipe. I can see why people would request this for special events. It's time consuming, so it's a gift of love to people. My goodness, I can taste the lemon just a little bit. It brightens the whole thing up. Wow, I'm in love. So I will be in full disclosure. Yeah. I have had baklava twice mm -hmm. previously in my life and I did not care for it. Oh. And so I was really nervous about taking a taste of someone's special dish. Yes. Knowing that it is not necessarily a food that I enjoy and I'm converted. That <laughs> is epically amazing. I I've never had it with that crispness. No. And the flavors, and you're right, I've never tasted lemon. It's baklava always tastes like nut and sweet. This is such a complex mm -hmm. array of flavors, and you would never guess it because it has such simplistic ingredients. And none of it is cloying. It is not so one bit. Beautifully balanced in the texture and the oh my holy gosh. Holy moly. Do you have anything that you can talk about? Because I want one more bite. Yeah, okay. I don't know, but I will come up with something. Oh my I just gosh. Just to reiterate what Kristen said, thank you. Thank you for sending this in. Thank you for allowing us the chance to make it. Holy moly. I don't think you could get better. I'm, I'm blown away. Uh-huh. To be able to taste that lemon, there's no bitterness to the walnut not at all. Not one bit. It is not overly sweet. Right. It is not overly honey flavored. No. And then to have the Christmas, and I'm so glad that Carl mentioned how to maintain that because yes. I think that that is key and it looks <laughs> amazing. We look like we know what we're doing. I know, right? And here's the funny thing. You guys know that Carrie does not really love to cook. She'll bake. Yeah. But she really is not into anything that's terribly time consuming. And while we were off the recording, while we were pulling it out of the oven and we saw how beautiful it was, Carrie was like, I'm making this again. Oh, I absolutely would. Yeah. I think people would just lose their mind over this. For as nervous as I was going into this, yeah. I am doubly as thrilled to have had the chance to make this. Oh my gosh, me too. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much to Carl for submitting his mom's recipe. It was really amazing. Yes. Mrs. Easley. While we haven't tasted your brother David's baklava, we are willing to say in this very public and potentially international forum that we're positive yours is better. Here, here. <laughs> Be sure to set your alarm for next week's episode released on March 25th. The recipe we are making has an odd name, but I think it will be yummy. Thanks for listening to Mom's Wooden Spoon. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. If you want a copy of this recipe or to check out our blog, click on the link to our website in the podcast description. If you'd rather, you could get to our website through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pick your poison. Don't say poison. We're making food. Oh my gosh. We could all get together and have a quartet. We totally could. We could just do a quartet singing episode. Those recipes, 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 those recipes